It is an honor to be in downtown New York City at the Grand Hyatt at the 11th Annual Megagen Implant Symposium with the founder of the company, Dr. Kwong Bum Park. Did I say that right? Yes, exactly. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I have, um, they say if you speak multiple languages, uh, you're a uh, uh, European or an Asian or Latin America, but if you only speak one language, you're an American. And I, <laughs> I don't know any other foreign words. And I, I think it's amazing that you I can am. give an interview <laughs> in a second language. Um, what I am so impressed about you, I went to, I remember the first time I saw you lecture in mm -hmm. Scottsdale with some of my best friends, uh, Tom Mattern, who's one of your biggest fans. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just so amazing um many implant companies they're just corporations whatever but you're a real live dentist from seoul korea and your dental office mm -hmm. that you showed i mean it's like eight nine stories tall with all the specialties and i mean you are an amazing person <laughs> and i i i feel sorry for people who look at the word uh, megagen and think it's just a name i mean that that name is you um my first question to you is what made you want to start an implant company? Yes, in, to, in 1990, I placed my first implants and uh, made the, in the United States, of course. And then uh, we had a quite a big group of uh, study and uh, education teams. And um, with the repeated use of uh, American and European brand of implants, we found that something is not matching with our Korean patients because uh, Koreans are a little bit special, especially in terms of uh, food, the density of food and the chewing patterns. And, uh, as, uh, we had uh, more failures than expectations than on the literature. So, so we started to think, oh, we have to change something from uh, current design and the current shape of uh, implants. So we asked to, especially 3i, I was big fan of 3i implants, and uh, I, we requested the 3i to change the design, um, especially for Korean patients. But it was denied, of course. <laughs> At the time, Korea was very small, very tiny country, and uh, the number of implants placed at the time was not enough, so they didn't listen. And after that, uh, we contacted with uh, some European com companies also, but they had no ideas. So uh, we started to think uh, how we can make an implant company in Korea. But we we are we were just a dentist, no ideas on the engineering and uh, operation of company. So, uh, so anyway, we our team decided to make a company in 1998. But uh, okay, sometime when we have chance, yes, let's let's make a company, and we decided the name of company already. <laughs> and when I was in United States in two thousand to uh, study more with Dr. Thomas San, and, uh, and with the professors of UCLA, and then some guys, two guys, f fly from Korea. One was engineer, one was a uh, uh, businessman, and they told me, oh, they can help me. Uh, our team to make a company. So that was the start. The, so uh, what? why I made the implant company? The answer is yes. I, had, I didn't like uh, the design of implants at the time. So. <laughs> so now at 2015, do you believe that Koreans um, have a different chewing or a different diet or chewing factor? That, that was different than the rest of the world? And yes. And what is that from? Is it more chewing or different types of food or less? Mm -hmm. what, do, what do you think it was? It's quite a strong. It's more wears on the, on the tooth with the Korean patients. So the chewing pattern is a, it's a different kind of food. You see Americans and the Europeans eat uh, food like chop, chop, chop. That's enough. But Koreans use their more grind lateral movements. It's totally different. With accumulation of stress, I had a lot of failures, broken failures, fractures. So even two uni bridge or three uni bridge with the three implants was cut. It's, 
it's unbelievable. I, I cannot I want, imagine. <laughs> I want to give you three words and have you talk about each one of those words. So on Dental Town, I look at the the words that dentists are searching. Mm -hmm. And when they go to implants, the top three searches are gonna be, should I cement this or screw it? Mm -hmm. Number two, I don't think anybody knows what um, platform shifting is. Mm -hmm. And of course, the big one, immediate load. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about all three of those subjects? Yes, uh, what, which one is the first? Um, cement or cement screw? Cement or screw. So I started uh, my implant practice with uh, screw retained uh, prosthetics, mainly. At the time, uh, uh, of course, my mentor, my teachers uh, taught me to make that kind of uh, prosthetics because of retrievability. Uh, so 99% of uh, prosthetics I made uh, on, the, on my implants was uh, screw retained prosthetics. But uh, external hexed implant has some limitations. Retrievability is good with the screw retained, but not easy to, to make precise pre uh, precisions. So we developed a uh, combination uh, of uh, cement and the screw retained. So we, we named as, uh, I said one Korean guy named it as uh, SCLP. Screw, cement, retained prosthetics, SCLP combination techniques. And the most of Korean uh, dentists use the technique still now. And it's good. But recently, with the help of uh, CAD CAM technology, so I usually make uh, cement retained prosthetics. And um, because we can control the cement space, it's much more retentive. And uh, even we use very, um, well, it's very flexible temporary cement and it's, it, mm, it can be maintained in the mouth, very stable. And if we want to take it out, you can take it out. So retrievability uh, with uh, temporary cement and the customized abutment and the Gilconia crown, it matches very well. So nowadays I'm using almost 100%, almost 100% with the screw retained. Uh, no, 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 cement, C cement retained, yeah. And what cement are you using specifically? Um, there are many different kind of uh, uh, implant cement. So I'm, I'm using SEM implant cement, CEM implant cement. It's good. In and who brain. makes that? It's made in France. 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 Mm. Okay. But uh, but it's, I think other other implants cement other implant cement is uh, similar. Okay. Mm. And you said CAD CAM. Yeah. What specific CAD CAM system are you using? Mm, as we call uh, this as a mm, digital implant technology, right? But most of people start to use, uh, are using CT. There is a one part, digital. And uh, to make, uh, we are using CAD CAM machines to make customized abutment and uh, CAD CAM made prosthetics. So uh, I like to use a Gilconia customized abutment mainly and I usually make a monolithic zirconia crowns on top of the customized abutments. What what machine brand name CAD CAM are you using? Uh, in my clinic, I, we are using three different machines. Wow. So one is uh, IMS iCore. IMS I, I, I IMS iCore. It is a, a, a German German company. Okay, it's called IMS. So I, can you spell it? I M E S. I M E S C O R. Okay. IMS iCore, uh, it was good. Uh, I met the machine as a first, so I'm, I'm using still. I'm using it, and for the mass productions, um, I forgot the name. Zirconia. Uh, I need to ask. <laughs> That's okay. And the one uh, for the titanium products, I like a Korean Korean uh, CAD CAM. It's uh, really good. And what's the name of that one? Mm. Arum, Arum, Arum uh, Company. Huh. Um, okay. And um, so, what about a, a lot of dentists are confused about can we immediate load or not? Mm -hmm. Will you talk about when it's good to immediate load, when it's good not to, mm -hmm. and just talk about your thoughts on immediate load? I so we have uh, we have lots of. Uh, articles on the immediate loading, maybe 20, 30 years ago. 
the, we, many doctors started immediate loading, but most of the uh, articles from, uh, was made for the, from mandibular, hard right. bones, and the uh, full mouth case. Uh, why we have to, we, we cannot do immediate loading more often on the upper arch? It's because of stability right? and the implant design. So we know uh, the implant stability goes down uh, after implant placement for third and uh, to third and the fourth week. So the third and fourth week, the first month, actually it can be said as the weakest point of the implants. So we have to wait until uh, six, eight week. We when we have we recover the implant stability with the osseous integrations. So we, we followed that rule almost 20 years. But we, I, I thought, our team started to thought, if, why we don't make a special implant system which it doesn't show, which doesn't show the decrease of implant stability? So we tried many uh, uh, experiments, and then finally we found, oh, very knife edge, knife threaded uh, implants have. Uh, uh, a, it doesn't make a, a big stress on the bone. Just uh, cut the bone and uh, place uh, uh, during the implant placement, and uh, it has a wide uh, surface, and it doesn't push bone that much. So do, because of uh, mm, the pressures. Uh, during and after implant placement, the surface of the um, uh, the surface of the implants have uh, no, no, not surface. The bone against the implant surface have uh, some amount of necrosis, and at the beginning, not not big. So that's why we have a decrease on the ISQ and implant stability. If we can maintain the the first initial stability for uh, forever or if uh, the stability goes up always, yes, we can start. We can start immediate loading. We can uh, start loading immediately after surgery. So we got it. With uh, uh, the first design was uh, finished in uh, 2008, and uh, we measured ISQ several hundred uh, implants, and found we found it. okay, this is really good. But uh, and that for in 2009, 2010. We start to lecture to our uh, colleagues and uh, dentists in Korea, and the many people said, "Oh, I don't want to do because what?" So they still want to want to be. Um, what is it? They want to be just to stay at their current uh, implant treatments. They don't need to fasten. They just uh, place implants, wait several months. And some guys told me, yes, it, it, it looks a little bit scary. I said, if some patient has failure, implant uh, failures, who will, um, who will get back? You, you can <laughs> guarantee? No. So we tried to modify the, the goal was uh, fixed. How to educate people, how, what kind of instrument, what kind of equipment we need to convince them. So. Any ridge was the first, and then we tried to make a, a very convenient ISQ machines and torquing machine also, and somebody who wants to load very safely, even th even though there are some mistake. Uh, so we made uh, fuse abutments for the immediate loading. Then when they repeat to use a fuse abutment and they repeat to try the immediate loading, they will realize oh this is much better, and this is very safe, then I can try immediate loading with a uh, definitive uh, uh, customized button and the crown. So that was uh, uh, our five years history. So <laughs> I want to ask you, um, in the United States, um, most of the implants are placed by oral surgeons and periodontists, mm -hmm. would you agree? Mm -hmm. And probably nine out of ten general dentists, family dentists, have never placed an implant. Mm -hmm. Is that the way it is in Korea too? No, no. Um, explain explain the difference in mm -hmm. um, general dentists and specialists in Korea versus the United States. So I think in Korea, from the beginning, 
And so we don't, we didn't have uh, strong specialties. Of course, we have uh, specialties in in the university, and uh, I'm a periodontist. I trained for three years, but nobody refer the period patients to me. <laughs> I have to do, I have to finish my uh, prosthetics on my patient also. <laughs> so everybody do surgery, everybody do prosthetics. Even endodontics. Is that the way it is in most of the world? Is is the United States kind of isolated in the fact that it has nine specialties mm -hmm. that have thirty thousand dentists in nine specialties, seven of which are clinical, two of them are non-clinical, um, public health and oral radiology, but seven clinical, mm -hmm. and then one hundred twenty thousand general dentists. Mm -hmm. um, is that kind of unique to the United States? Does most of the rest of the world not heavy in specialties? I think so. And uh, the trend is going to the general dentist. And uh, I believe every dentist should be the super general, super general dentist. And, and when you think of implants um, in Korea, um, what percent of implants, okay, like in the United States, when, when impressions go to the lab, 95 out of 100 are for one tooth at a time. Mm -hmm. Only 5% are for big cases. Mm -hmm. um, is that the way it is it, with implants in Korea? I mean, for the, what is there, 40,000 dentists in Korea? Is it 40,000? Uh, yeah, 15. How many? 15, it's in total, uh, we have 20,000. 20,000 20, And among them, uh, uh, 15,000 uh, dentists are placing implants. So you have 20,000 dentists in South Korea mm -hmm. and 15,000 of them place implants. Yes. So three out of four place implants. implants right. And here it's only one out of 20. <laughs> so you got a lot of growth here. Yes. So, so, but my question specifically was, um, uh, when those 15,000 dentists are placing implants, what percent of the time, or is it just for replacing one missing tooth? And uh, it's, it's becoming Smaller and smaller. When I started, it's smaller and smaller. Yeah, it, when I started, the, the implant was uh, was not very popular, and the patients were, uh, didn't know what is implant. So we need to educate the patients. At that time, about 20, 25 years ago, I had a lot of full mouth cases, but now people were educated. That they know how to uh, treat, and whenever they have they lose one tooth, they think implants. Now. So in most cases, I do surgery on the single implant, in single missing case. So most of your implant cases today are just one at a time? In most cases. Okay, so, <laughs> so I want you to talk now um, to these general dentists who have never placed an implant. Mm -hmm. um, how could a general dentist, um, what would, you know, you, we want to go to the next floor. There's several steps. Talk about the first couple of steps. Mm -hmm. um, what training would you recommend? You know, somebody is listening to this podcast driving to work and they're like well first question is what would be an ideal case would it be what 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 would be your favorite tooth i mean obviously a first molar might need a sinus lift mm -hmm. what would be the easiest first case and and how could that person get trained mm -hmm. what well, much training to, to do that first so what tooth would you recommend first of what, course of course uh the heel the reach and the hard bone hard in the bone and the inner with the enough height of bone so, but it, so where around the be, mouth, lower uh, anterior, lower, lower molar, lower molar, lower molar is the lower best molar. place. Okay, the first molar and second second molar is quite uh, difficult to approach. So uh, first and the second free molar and uh, first molar will be the the best candidate. The lower second premolar uh -huh. and the lower first molar mm -hmm. that'd be easiest. So number two, would you want a 3D X-ray of that? Would you want a CBCT? Of course, of, of course. course. Yes. If we have, a, I usually used uh, worked with the panoramic uh, digital panorama at the beginning, but uh, with the uh, uh, CBCT, so I could open, I could open my eyes, so I can, I could imagine uh, what I can, uh, where I uh, can encounter with the uh, with the surgery. So, uh, um, emergence. In, you can minimize the emergence. So, uh, if you have a CBCT, do you like any particular CBCTs? Any systems no, you like? Nowadays, nowadays, uh, all I, I believe most uh, CBCT companies make a very very nice quality of uh, CT okay. machines. Yeah. And on this um, on this implant, um, do you would you recommend a surgical guide? If it's only for one tooth, and there's a tooth in front, there's a mm -hmm. tooth in back. Mm -hmm. Are those two teeth enough to guide you? I mean, you just have to. Yes. Or, or would you recommend a surgical guide? 
for, for yes. your first hundred implants? For the first hundred implants, actually, I don't recommend uh, to use such a stent. They have to understand. You do or it's don't? It's really, really, um, really good to, to make a minimally invasive surgery. But if he wants to learn implant procedure, he needs to know how to make a incision, how to handle the soft tissues. So if you just rely on the surgical guide, they don't know how, how you can make a tissue, how, how you can feel the bone density, what's the shape of the uh, rigid resorptions. So the, during the first uh, few, no, not few cases, 20, 50 cases, I hope they can make incisions. And, and lay a flap. flap place implants, yes. Without a surgical guide? With or without a surgical guide. With or without a surgical mm -hmm. guide. But uh, with a repeat, uh, after understanding of the, uh, the bone quality and the soft tissue management, they, they, need, they can min minimize the, the surgical, uh, surgical complications. It's just what, what training would you recommend? Uh, as a general dentist? Mm -hmm. Who's never uh, placed an implant and wants to add this treatment uh, in my mind, I, not <laughs> uh, not I am a periodontist. Mm. I think in the implant treatments, the soft tissue is the most important. Of course, we have to know how to handle bones, how to regenerate the bone deficiency. But without the soft tissue, excellent soft tissue skill, it's very difficult to make bones. So, yeah, I hope they can try to make plebs and. Uh, Try to make a sutures as accurate as possible, and with minimal minimal tangents. So they have to understand the soft tissue first. So incision and suture is the is the first priority to me. I would love um, I would love it if someone like yourself could provide an implant curriculum from mm -hmm. A to Z online. Mm -hmm. You know, one hour courses, diagnosing tree planning, how to do a CAD cam, mm -hmm. how to do, I, I would love that. Mm -hmm. I, I wish someday they could log on to Dental Town and have like 25 to 50 one hour classes mm -hmm. on implants from mm -hmm. A to Z. I think that would be fantastic for dentistry. I think so. And, and uh, not, not just, uh, we are dentists. So we, we need uh, uh, very nice uh, handle skills, not only the, the uh, knowledge, so what would you say to a dentist who's looking out there and there's 50 different kinds of implant systems mm -hmm. um, and now they get, a, they get to talk to you, the, the dentist, periodontist, owner who started Imogen. If this dentist is driving his car and is probably wondering, tell me what's different about your implant than another system. Why, why, what, why should a dentist use Megagen? So we are uh, still a tiny company and uh, most of uh, University teach the major implant, uh, major implant systems. It's the Nobel and the Stroman and uh, some Euro European implant systems. But in my mind, uh, it's, it's kind of perceptions. Many uh, big companies made uh, a lot of articles, and so just uh, they rely on the articles. So uh, they think uh, these articles and uh, this uh, company is trustful, trustful. But in my mind, it's not. Most articles I found, most articles were made with the guide, with the guidance of company. So, so I don't like it, <laughs> of course. But, but even when we are make, we are trying to make more uh, scientific articles. But why they have to use uh, megagen implant? I cannot say. But this is very very special and they need to if somebody want to switch from this implant system to other implant systems it will not be easy because they are used to use they are stuck already their brain was stuck with these implant systems if they have a new implant system which can give different characteristics different phenomena they are scared they feel scared they, I, even this is better they don't have experience. So after several years, usually they can start to change their, their mind, their systems. So um, it's, it's a problem of perceptions. Okay. I want to ask you another question. I want to get back on the third search word. 
platform switching. Mm -hmm. So many dentists are searching for that term. Mm -hmm. So they're obviously they they want more information. What 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 is platform switching? Is that is that what why what what is platform that? Platform switching is uh, when we started the implant system with the especially with the uh, brain mark system. The platform of the implant was exactly matched with the platform of uh, abutments. There was no offsets, just straight. Uh, it was connected straight. Then uh, with the, uh, we found some amount of bone loss around the implants. We call it uh, source rejections. So we ad accepted it's just normal. But with the repeated uh, uh, studies, uh, we found it's because of a bacteria, bacterial products, bacterial toxins. So some uh, scientists and some uh, doctors tried to make a smaller platform and, and a smaller connections against the, the, the implant platform. So if, even after placement of uh, five millimeter diameter of implants, they tried to uh, place four millimeter diameter of abutments. They, on single side, they had a 0.5 millimeter gap. Then it means the bone is uh, that much far from the bacterial products. So they found the bone, uh, bone loss was reduced. Then with the development of internal connections, the, the precision became much better. And that means the space where, where bacteria can survive was minimized. Then bacterial products was much, much less than external hex implants. Then we found, oh, bone was much better. The crest bone was uh, very well maintained with internal connections. Internal, if we use internal connections, there is uh, automatically some amount of uh, uh, platform switching. Okay, let me ask you another question, since you're a periodontist. Mm -hmm. Of the implants that fail, do you think that's more failures are caused by the operator, the, the dentist error in drilling the bone too hard or fast or burning the bone? Or do you think more implants fail from bacteria, like because they had periodontal disease, mm -hmm. uh, the tooth had an abscess, mm -hmm. uh, a failed root canal? Um, do, what, what do you think is a bigger fact? Is bone burning a um, big issue in placement? Yes, it, it depends on the stage of the failure. If we have a failure uh, after uh, two weeks after implant placement, yes, we can think it's mainly because of uh, overheating. But if we have a failure uh, several, several years <laughs> after implant placement, we, we have to think it's because of uh, uh, bacteria, then the overloading. Bacteria and force. Yes, yes, that is the two key word. And, and do you think it's more, if an implant fails five years later, do you think it's more bacteria or more force? It's combined, but, but uh, when I used the 3 i implant system, at the time they had a uh, machined surface, but ITI had uh, what is it, TPS surface. TPS surface are very easy, it's very easy to be contaminated with bacteria, but t uh, machine surface was very clean, and they, we had a, a strong debate which surface is better. And then said, they said. <laughs> I want to also, um, I also want to congratulate you. Um, this, your, you just came out with the first edition of your book from yeah. A to Z Implantology, mm -hmm. and it is an amazing book. Everyone at the convention, we've all been looking at it and reading it last night, today, mm -hmm. this morning. Tell us about your new book. <laughs> Actually, our group published many books on the soft tissue management and uh, regeneration and our previous, previous implant systems. And this is focused on the uh, our what is it, future projects named as uh, Eureka R2. So we, are, we are trying to make uh, the second revolution in implant dentistry. And what was the first revolution and what is the second revolution? Uh, first revolution is, uh, is from Dr. Brandmark about in 1985 to, to this, the start of this 
Eureka Art Project. And and explain what you mean by Eureka. I mean, uh, Eureka is Eureka. Eureka is a uh, is kind of interjections. So when we find something, Archimedes, you know, Archimedes found the, the rules and that they he said, oh, Eureka, I found it, something like this. Right. Yeah. So we, uh, when we made a plan for the one day implants, which will be the future, very soon. Uh, one day implant means place implants, the deliver the definitive crown, and do uh, any kind of uh, regenerations at the same time with the surgery. They do it everything at once, and just gives me a space. Well, you know what? That is, you, that know is what you know what my fantasy is for that book. You know what my dream is. Uh, talk about a second revolution. Yeah. So we start. I started Dental Town in 1998, and you started Megagen in 1998. We're uh -huh. both dentists. <laughs> and when I started Dental Town, it was on a personal computer. And of the two million dentists around the world, only 500,000 had a personal computer mm -hmm. and dental town got 200,000 of those 500,000 dentists as members <laughs> but then but the mainframe went the way the PC's going out now it's a smartphone yes and we came out with the the dental town app mm -hmm. and um, over 50,000 dentists have downloaded it and we're our podcast is going to be on the app under podcast mm -hmm. uh, where they can watch this mm -hmm. and dentists are um, what's really popular is they go to their um, their settings and they hit Bluetooth mm -hmm. and they're listening to it in their car. Mm -hmm. But guess what our new section is that we're going to have we're um, next month we're like we're launching books. Good. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of there's a lot of kids who don't want to carry around a five pound book in their person <laughs> and go on an airplane. I agree. <laughs> and it would be the greatest honor for me ever uh -huh. if our first digital book mm -hmm. was by the man himself, a real dentist who's starting a second revolution in implant. So yes. um, if you if you're Great. thinking about that, yes. I would I would love that because then uh -huh. they can read it on their iPhone. There's there's Samsung. You're from Korea, so mm -hmm. I I'm embarrassed. I have an iPhone. I should have a Samsung. I do have a um, an LG TV. Uh -huh. So Hyundai, LG, Samsung. What Hyundai? Um, Samsung, Samsung, LG. The, are those the three biggest consumer brands in Korea? Kia. Kia. Mm -hmm. Uh, is Kia and Hyundai? Yes, yes, uh, Hyundai is the same company, but Kia and Hyundai same mm -hmm. Samsung. But um, <laughs> if I want you to think about that, because if you put that um, book on our new Dental Town app, it will. I think it'll be read more times. Yes, it's than a, than it's the. Fragile. We are we are preparing the digital book also. Okay, mm. but I just want to tell you, um, it was an honor um, to meet you three years ago in Scottsdale. I wish everybody could see um how could dentists out there see a picture of your dental office in seoul korea south korea seoul south korea so could, we, is that on your website but is it on your uh, website megagen uh no 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 our we we have a different network the different company named as a mirror dental network mm -hmm. mir m-i-r the dental network yeah, and, uh, you know, um, you we we have a magazine that goes to 125,000 dentists. Mm -hmm. I, I wish you would someday write us a, a, a story of you, an autobiography, showing your your clinic because I was me and Tom Madden were mesmerized by your lecture in Scottsdale. What you're doing there is just phenomenal. You're you're an amazing man, <laughs> and I, I, I would like to share your story with more Americans. So if you ever have time to write an article that has pictures of you and your clinic and your facility, mm -hmm. that, that's just amazing. And Thank one you. of my lifelong that's dreams great. is actually lecture to the uh, Korean Dental Association. So mm -hmm. if you have any contacts there, I'd sure like to come over there and lecture and see your clinic in person. Why not? I Why would not? love that. But thank you so much for your <laughs> thank time. You very much. You're an thank amazing you. man. Thank you very much.